My name is Matt Hector. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer of Makana Therapeutics, and I'm here to discuss our approach to solving the organ shortage problem in transplantation for patients suffering from kidney failure. Our approach is to use pigs as organ donors so that we can grow enough organs to fulfill the gap between supply and demand. So there are really um, a handful of challenges that have been barriers to the application of xenotransplantation clinically. One of those, which I haven't mentioned here, is the cellular immune response, but there are available drugs today that can manage that effectively, so I won't touch on those further. But other challenges that exist in xenotransplantation are the fact that the human immune system makes antibodies that recognize tissues from every pig, and those antibodies can rapidly attack and destroy the pig organs such that they're unable to support life in a human being. Another set of potential challenges that people have historically discussed in this field is the fact that pig organs, or pig molecules specifically, may not interact with human molecules in a way that would allow various physiologic processes to achieve their necessary function to support human life. And an example of that is the pig organ produces a molecule called the erythropoietin that some people think is unable to interact with the human cells in an effective manner such that those cells can produce red blood cells that are necessary to sustain life. Ways that people have attempted to overcome these challenges um, are the following. For the antibody problem, people have attempted to eliminate targets of those human antibodies on the pig organs by inactivating pig genes that synthesize those targets. As far as the physiologic challenges go, people have attempted to introduce human transgenes, and in some cases as many as 10 human transgenes, in an effort to try to complete um, the physiologic processes effectively uh, across a number of physiologic systems. My brother, Joe Pector, is a practicing transplant surgeon. He's been studying xenotransplants for multiple decades, and he's the founder of Makana Therapeutics. He noticed as a transplanter, same species transplanter and human to human transplants, he realized that many of these proposed physiologic aberrations that people say are a problem in xenotransplantation can also be observed in the same species transplants when antibodies from the recipient are attacking and destroying the transplanted donor tissue. So based with, uh, armed with that information, he decided that our company's approach would focus solely on the antibody challenges. And once um, those antibody issues have been eliminated, he proposed that then the physiologic challenges would actually disappear and take care of themselves because he thought that there was sufficient biological compatibility that the pig hormones and other molecules that need to interact with cells and molecules on the human side would be effective in accomplishing the tasks that they need to do to sustain life. So the first question was, is it even possible to create a pig where there are no human antibody challenges. And the way we approach that is the following. We evaluated pig genes as potential candidates for producing targets of human antibodies. And we identified three of those genes that we began inactivating. And this data here just shows a series of graphs where it's antibody binding profiles of 44 patients in need of an organ transplant. And their antibody binding to pig cells collected from animals that have on the left either zero genes knocked out, and that's the type of animal you run into on your typical farm. And then we introduced one, two, or three gene knockouts as you move from left to right. And what you can see in the zero knockout pig on the left, everybody has high anti-pig antibody uh, profiles. Ideally, you want your antibody binding profile to be in the lower left uh, portion of the, each of those graphs. But what you can also see from this approach is that as we eliminated one, two, and then three genes, the antibody binding profile in, can continue to improve in this situation where there was less and less human anti-pig antibodies. And finally, when we got to the three gene knockout pig, 
we noticed that some of those patients were in the extreme lower left portion of that graph, indicating that they have no anti-pig antibodies to this three-gene knockout pig. But that's only 44 patients. So obviously the goal of xenotransplantation is to make this therapy available ideally to everybody in need of an organ. So to see how broadly applicable this result was, we just increased the size of the study where we now collected serum from 820 patients in need of an organ transplant. And we again repeated the analysis, uh, looking at their antibody binding to cells from these three gene knockout pigs. And what we learned from this study is the following. First, in the lower left corner indicated by the red square, 30% of patients have no detectable antibodies to these three gene knockout pigs. This is exciting because we would expect these types of patients to have long-term success and survival if receiving a kidney from these donor animals. Also interesting though, are the additional 40% of patients highlighted in the blue square or blue rectangle. And what you can see there is that these patients have low enough antibody binding levels to these pig cells and they're of a certain type that can be managed clinically. There are therapeutic options that let this type of antibody binding profile be managed so that that additional 40% of patients can also expect long-term survival when receiving a pig kidney from these three gene knockout pigs. So this is already, this is a barrier that many thought couldn't be crossed. So we're very excited that uh, we have, and um, with the numbers of patients that we think we can benefit today, we think it's a great early start to the field. We expect and are continuing to do further research, obviously, with the goal of getting 100% of patients to have no anti-pig antibodies. But again, today is the first step. This is a tremendous improvement. So will this approach, this low antigen or low antibody target approach work when actually uh, attempted in a transplantation setting? So the model that we use to study this, as others do, is the preclinical pig kidney into a non-human primate transplant model. And in this model, the pig kidneys provide life-sustaining function when transplanted into a non-human primate. And the non-human primates, I should note, reproduce uh, uh, very well this antibody barrier that I've discussed in the human being situation. And what we've done to begin comparing how likely we are to anticipate success is we've compared survival in our pig kidney to non-human primate model to a same species non-human primate to non-human primate kidney transplant model. And that uh, graph on the right represents survival curves after transplantation. So the black line represents the same species transplant survival, and the red curve represents our xenotransplant uh, survival. And what you can see in the black curve is that up to 300 days where the comparisons were valid, um, they had three of five transplants still surviving where we had three of six xenotransplants still surviving. So we're very closely approximating the frequency with which longer term survival can be achieved. I should also note the three animals that we had surviving up to 300 days actually went on to live 414, 547, and 550, uh, 557 days, indicating that not only are we able to repeatedly get longer term survival, but the survival clearly extends beyond a year, which is the uh, goalpost that has been put forth by the FDA and other regulatory agencies for evaluating whether or not this therapy is ready for potential uh, human application. We're excited also with our minimal gene editing approach because it adds, um, in addition to the ability to repeatedly show long-term survival, it has several other benefits. First of all, by having fewer gene edits, these pigs are, remain healthy and easier to produce. It also simplifies the discussion and the thinking around the regulatory process um, as we're trying to gain approval to begin uh, clinical trials with human beings and ultimately human application as a end destination therapy. Um, it, obviously, the more genetic modifications you need to uh, put into an animal, makes that regulatory process more complicated and involved because there are more moving pieces. And then lastly, as I noted, although we're very excited where we stand today with the ability to potentially help as many as 70% of patients with our 3G knockout pig, 
the goal is to make this um, the safest and most effective therapy for 100% of patients in need. So by having fewer gene edits um, as you start this process, as new data comes in, it becomes easier to accumulate that data, put it into context with the fewer gene edits, and then really make um, the ideal decisions with what changes to add in the future to further improve this technology. So we're excited that clinical trials may be ready to go as early as 2024 in human beings. Thank you. Thank you.